All right, picture this. Planes that never need to land, fueled by a raw, limitless energy source. Sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi novel, right? But believe it or not, back in the thick of the Cold War, America cooked up a plan to build just that. A fleet of nuclear-powered aircraft capable of staying airborne almost indefinitely. Think about it. Planes that could circle the globe for days, maybe weeks on end, only needing to land when the crew got tired, not because the plane ran out of fuel. These bad boys were designed to be nearly invincible, a flying force of non-stop nuclear deterrence that could keep America's enemies on their toes 24-7. But let's be real. The journey from paper plans to airborne reactors wasn't a straight shot. This wild project hit some gnarly obstacles, racked up insane costs, and got shelved long before it could fully take off. Yet it's worth digging into the details of what America was cooking up, the incredible ideas that almost made it, and, yeah, the massive price tag that ultimately grounded this audacious venture. In the 1950s, the world was knee-deep in Cold War paranoia. Suddenly, people everywhere had nuclear energy on their minds. It became more than just a source of power or fear. It infiltrated culture. It birthed monsters like Godzilla, gave rise to superheroes like Spider-Man and the Hulk, and ignited hopes for a future with endless energy. But there was a dark side, too. People worried about what could happen if things went wrong. And it's right here, where dreams and fears collided, that the idea of nuclear-powered planes took off. Nuclear bombs weren't just weapons, they were bargaining chips, symbols of dominance, and the United States wanted a guarantee that no matter what, it could deliver a retaliatory strike. That's where nuclear-powered aircraft came in. Unlike regular planes that guzzle fuel by the ton, these nuclear beasts could, in theory, fly indefinitely. The thought process was simple. If America had aircraft that could stay airborne for days, maybe weeks, without landing, it'd have the ultimate flying fortress. A power move that screamed, we're ready anytime, any place. Nuclear-powered planes would become this mobile deterrent, always up there, always ready, making sure no one dared to strike first. This project was the love child of the Atomic Age's boundless optimism and Cold War urgency. So, how much did Uncle Sam pour into this idea? Well, the exact numbers are hard to pin down, but we're talking tens of millions just for research, with costs potentially reaching over a billion if they pushed ahead to mass production. Today, a billion dollars for a weapons program doesn't sound too wild. But remember, we're talking about the 50s, when a billion bucks could practically buy you a new state. It wasn't chump change. Let's talk tech, because, believe it or not, the science behind nuclear-powered planes wasn't pure fantasy. There were two main designs in mind, direct cycle and indirect cycle. The direct cycle design was nuts. Essentially, air would flow directly through the reactor, get heated up, and blast out as thrust. The pros? It was efficient, in theory. The cons? Yeah, that radioactive air was just blasting out the back of the plane, which is about as dangerous as it sounds. Can you imagine that trail of radiation? No bueno. Then there was the indirect cycle design, which was a bit more refined. In this setup, the reactor heated up a closed loop of liquid metal, which then transferred heat to the air without direct exposure to radiation. Safer? Definitely. But it also made the engine way bulkier and much harder to maintain. Neither option was perfect, but scientists were pushing the boundaries of what they thought was possible. The big player in this whole endeavor was the Convair X-6, an experimental bomber built to test these nuclear propulsion concepts. The X-6 was a modified version of the B-36 Peacemaker, one of the largest bombers in the U.S. arsenal. This behemoth was supposed to house a working nuclear reactor on board producing enough power to keep it flying for hours or days without refueling. But as you can imagine, things didn't go quite according to plan. On paper, nuclear-powered aircraft were a golden ticket. Imagine a fleet of bombers that never had to land. 
Not only would it keep adversaries on constant high alert, but it would also give the US an unbeatable edge in strategic deterrence. The Soviets would have no clue if or when one of these planes was nearby. They'd be flying up there like watchdogs, ready to respond to any threat. This kind of capability would have been a massive psychological advantage, making it nearly impossible for the Soviets to plan a surprise strike without risking an immediate devastating response. Then there was the practical benefit of conserving regular fuel. Oil and gas, even back then, were a big ticket item. If you had an aircraft running on nuclear power, theoretically, you would need to worry about fuel shortages, supply lines, or the logistical nightmare of constant refueling. In the grand scheme, nuclear aircraft would have liberated America's air power from the constraints of earthly resources. Just fire it up and it'd keep on cruising. But as you can probably guess, this nuclear dream had some serious downsides. First off, radiation. Anytime you're dealing with a nuclear reactor, safety is priority number one. Now stick that reactor on a plane, throw it thousands of feet up and fly it over populated areas. That's a pretty sketchy setup. Scientists tried to find ways to shield the crew from radiation, but there's only so much lead you can slap onto an aircraft before it becomes too heavy to fly. Even the best shielding wouldn't eliminate all exposure, and if the plane ever went down, Disaster! Imagine a nuclear reactor crashing from the sky, spewing radiation all over the place. Then there was the sheer weight of the reactor and shielding. Nuclear reactors aren't exactly light, and airplanes need to be as lightweight as possible. Every extra pound meant less efficiency and more challenges with takeoff and maneuverability. The B-36, for instance, was already a behemoth and adding a reactor made it a sluggish beast. This wasn't the nimble aircraft you'd want for dodging enemy fire. It was more of a slow-moving tank in the sky. Let's also not forget about maintenance. Nuclear reactors require meticulous care, and sticking one on an aircraft that was constantly flying didn't make that job any easier. One small issue with the reactor, and you're risking a radiation leak mid-air. The logistics of servicing these nuclear-powered planes was daunting, to say the least. So why didn't we go through with it? Well, it boils down to costs, risks, and ultimately practicality. Even though nuclear-powered planes sounded like an unstoppable force on paper, the real-world challenges stacked up fast. Developing these aircraft was burning through cash with little progress. And by the 1960s, advancements in missile technology made nuclear-powered planes look a lot less necessary. Intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, could deliver a nuclear payload anywhere on the globe in a matter of minutes, without needing to stick a reactor in the sky. Plus, as nuclear power became better understood, so did its risks. The idea of planes flying over cities, potentially leaking radiation, became less and less acceptable to the public and to politicians. People were already getting uneasy about nuclear weapons themselves. The idea of nuclear-powered planes was just a bridge too far. By the early 1960s, the government had poured millions into research and experiments, only to find that the concept was too dangerous, too costly, and ultimately unnecessary. The Convair X-6 and its nuclear aspirations were put to bed, and the dream of a nuclear-powered sky fleet became a footnote in Cold War history. Even though the plan for nuclear-powered planes never truly took off, it wasn't all for nothing. The research pushed the boundaries of what we thought possible with nuclear power. Lessons learned in radiation shielding, reactor design, and high-altitude endurance would trickle down into other fields particularly nuclear-powered submarines and spacecraft. These nuclear-powered aircraft might not have ended up patrolling the skies, but the ideas that came from this program set the stage for future innovations in energy and defense. And today, we're still captivated by the concept. It's an insane idea that teeters between genius and madness. America's nuclear-powered planes might not have become a reality, 
but the sheer audacity of the project lives on as a reminder of just how far we were willing to go to stay one step ahead. It's a relic of an era when anything seemed possible, if you had enough ambition and enough nuclear fuel. So, while America's nuclear-powered aircraft never got to soar, they left us with a story as electrifying as the reactors they hoped to harness. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.